All right. Welcome, everyone. Today is Wednesday, November 20th, and this is the Aperio Teaching and Learning Call. So, so happy to see you guys here. Um, today, Jeff Wilson is going to be um, presenting on the new cloud service integration options. Uh, and I have pasted the Etherpad link into the chat for folks to go and um, sign in to Etherpad. Uh, and that's where you'll also see our agenda. We're going to start with some announcements. And um, there was some conversation uh, with Adrian and can't remember who else about digest functionality, whether we should keep it or not. And I think that got resolved in email that we are keeping it. Uh, so that is good news. And so really nothing to discuss there. Uh, any other announcements? There's nothing I can do about my crackly audio, I'm afraid. I don't, you know, it is what it is. Sorry. I'm not doing anything to make it so. I can try turning off my audio and starting it again. Let me, let me try that. So I think I have joined by phone now. Can you guys hear me better? A lot softer. Okay, well I can try to a little low. Okay, well turn up your volume. Okay. Uh so uh, thanks for signing in to Etherpad. And uh, if it's really annoying how low I'm talking, please chat and let me know, and I'll try to speak up more. Um, but I'm taking announcements now. If anybody has any announcements. I, I know that the, the UX call comes right after this call at 11 a.m. So um, that's one announcement. Okay. So uh, if no one else has any, I know if Wilmer were here, she would have some. But oh, hi, Camp registration is up. Yes, Dave, thank you so much. Uh, Wilmer sent out an email today to everybody um, about signing up for the Kai Camp which is the end of January and in Orlando. Uh, and certainly encourage folks to join us for that. It is a good meeting. So looking forward to seeing folks there. Um, I do have a couple of JIRAs that I would best to review. Um, so let me paste those links into the chat in case you want to go look at them yourself. The first one has to do with the desired behavior when using rubrics with forums. So that's SAC 41931. And Adrian is looking for feedback on this one. Um, take a quick look. Anybody familiar with this one have any comments to share? So I always prefer it when people ask to cover Jira's that they 
be on call to talk about it and to introduce it. And unfortunately, it's not here to do that. Um, Looks like the issue is Hi Tricia. I did see a screenshot in there. This is Laura this is Laura Gecklers. Yeah, I, I opened um the JIRA and then uh went to screenshot. They both have the same name. <laughs> I think it's the second one on the list. Yeah, the second one on the list shows all these uh, HTML things, like there's a B for bold inside the, what do we call those, the chevrons. And, uh, excuse me? I don't know what you're talking about. I don't see a screenshot in the Sierra. 41931. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Just... Nope, it's me. I um was missing the <laughs> <laughs> I was missing the digit. Oh dear. Okay. So um, I know it's about the rubric tool highlighting um, instructors selected cells so that students can do that. I believe that is the issue. Here we call today because it looks like you've made some comments yeah you want to to it. um i think that there was a lot of issues related to the rubric in forums that i had a particular instructor experiencing sam looks like he wants it broken down into very granular things i'm not real sure exactly how to do that um and i'm not sh it's it it all seems like it's all of a piece to me but anyway that's why there's so much there but this was clear last summer that i put this in here but it's getting a lot of uh, a lot of attention here in the last uh, week or so Another thing um when our issues get some attention so, but it does sound like they're asking for the issues to be broken up in materials, uh, maybe related to each other. And Josh is going to ask Adrian if he has time to join the discussion. Thank you, Josh. So that, um, and Dave E comments that Sean commented if it's in a grade book, it displays fine. It's just when it's graded or does not show properly in the grade book. So really that's our issue, as far as I know. Thank you, Dave, for that. That's very helpful. Um, I don't know what you mean by DS. Discussion forum. Oh, okay. Yeah, actually with the um recommendation we've been making to people is to um, if they're grading discussion forums using a rubric is to attach it to the grade book and commit the cardinal sin of opening two windows um, and looking at the forums in one window and and grading in the grade book in the other <coughs> yeah that is not a good um, workaround for sure okay Josh says Adrian is coming. Thank you so much, Josh. And uh, <laughs> Dave says, shall I grade and provide feedback while sinning with two windows? Say it isn't so. I know. It is a cardinal sin. Um, <clears throat> good way to stomp on your stuff. Well, I... You know, we all know we can recommend two separate browsers. Um, so, oh, that's, yes. yeah. Sure. Um, from the developer's point of view, as I understand, Sean Foster, you're on here too, but I'll I'll just say what the developers usually say. So if we look at Terry Golightly's student number one, um, that 
seems to indicate that the rubric information isn't retained until you save twice. That would be one issue for developers. And the other one is that the double zeros get added to whatever you type in the first time. <laughs> that would be a second JIRA. Um, and, I, and I don't know why they want it split into such a small thing because for me, if all of these aren't fixed, it's still broken. It's still broken, exactly. And yeah, I. it's not functioning like it needs to function. And I don't know if, if they need to make it 41931A and 41931B or well the way I the way I re uh, reconcile this is I think of a test plan right if you have this bug and um, and your test plan says we expect this to happen but this happened instead each one of that those is a separate requirement that should have a separate a separate test. So, um, Josh, go ahead. I, I understand the um, requirement because these are unique issues and they probably get fixed in discrete places. Uh, so, separate JIRAs make sense. Um, it's, you know, so, so Terry, you know, I would recommend that you create some JIRAs around the additional issues that you're reporting because they are in addition to the uh, the reason that this JIRA was created, which has to do with highlighting, <laughs> right? So I guess I, I I just have to I have to fix my brain to think that way. Okay. Yeah, think of it as the initial issue, the highlighting thing now works, but created several other issues. Yeah. Yeah, that's one thing is I, I keep thinking it's like a spider web and you, when you pluck one thing, it vibrates all over. Um, and I'm not sure how you split them all out where they don't affect each other. So one thing you can do is create subtasks for, you know, if a certain JIRA has kind of generated some fallout, create some subtasks to fix those fallout issues. Or just create other other issues and relate them to yeah, either one. Yeah, under the more under the more button here. I wish we were displaying our screen because then I, you know, if you're show if you're looking at the Jira and you're logged in, you get a more button that has a drop down, and um, way at the bottom is the word link, and so you can say it's the what your the new one you created is is related to this one. Where is the more okay. button? I am logged in. Oh, okay. I guess I'm not logged in. I thought I was logged in automatically, but it's wanting me to log in. Yeah. I'm logging in. I'm also going to share my screen. Cool. So, Thank <laughs> And I'm sorry, it's a squished up screen because I, I try to mash up my window so I can see both the big blue button window and our <laughs> Me too, Trisha. <laughs> You got to see the chat on the, yeah. Okay. More. So if you look at Trisha's screen, she's going to go ahead and click more and show you. Yeah, I see it now. Um, link to another issue. Okay. I see that now. Yeah. So you can either create a subtask and if that's wrong, somebody can fix that. Or you can create another issue and link to the existing one. And there's a lot of different options with link, but the ones most used are is related to. Yeah, Sean is saying subtasks should be used for steps needed to fix a particular issue. Okay. Or it's sort of like a to-do list or a checklist that are related to the current issue. So we prefer not to use them for individual individual issues. Yeah, so I would wonder if Adrian, um, I, I believe you're on the call and you do have a mic. So I just wanted to be sure that what we are discussing here is breaking out Terry Golightly's comments of other issues into new JIRAs. Is that what you wanted us to arrive at? Um, that makes a lot of sense. Um, but I mean, the what, main reason. 
Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, the main thing I wanted to um, talk about was the general, the general approach to, um, you know, to grading forums, right? I mean, um, so this this particular issue, I've got a fix for it, right? But I've not I've not made a PR for it because it's probably quite, you know, a bit on the contentious side, right? So basically, when I was going th when I was going through and looking at the way this, looking at the way it worked, right? So you pick a gray book item, right? And then when you've picked a gray book item, it allows you to pick a rubric, right? So, well, you can pick a rubric. So the gray book item can have a rubric on it of its own, mm -hmm. but you can pick a different rubric to the one that's already on the gray book item in the first place, right? So then the, situ and the, reason, the reason this bug happens is that what's effectively happening is you are, you are you are using a different rubric. I mean, even even if you associate, even if you pick the same rubric that the gray book item uses, even if you pick the same one from that drop down, you are getting two different evaluations being created on the system, right? So you can go and grade in forums with what you think is the same rubric, and you can you can pick some cells and stuff like that, right, and submit it. That gets stored. But gray book, the gray book item doesn't know anything about that particular rubric evaluation. It only knows about its own one, the rubric it has attached to itself, if you know what I'm saying, right? Mm -hmm. That's the basic problem. So, yeah, yeah go, go ahead. Yeah, no, that, that makes sense. And, I, and so what, what, have you, what approach have you used to try to address that? Right. So, so basically what I've, what I've done is I've, I've basically changed it now. So if you, if you pick, like I said, this is not, this is not in, it's not in master or anything, right? This is just my local code, right? So mm -hmm. I've changed it so that if you pick a grade book item and that grade book item has a rubric already, it shows you the rubric, but the rubric is read only. You can't change the settings on it or anything, right? All you can, all you can do is preview it, right? So you can hit the preview button and kind of look at the rubric, but you can't pick another rubric you can only use the rubric that's on that gray book item already, right? And then that's the rubric that gets shown against the forum or the topic that you're grading, right? So when you, and that works, right? That works. So when you, when you evaluate it um, and save it, you can go into gray book and you see the evaluation in gray book and you see the same evaluation where, wherever you look at that rubric after that, but that changes the way you do things. Now you can't, you can't have separate, um, you can't pick a separate rubric. That's one thing you can't do. A different rubric. You have to use the rubric that's on that grade book item. It's the so only way you. you... That, Go on. When you say that, do you mean that you have to have grade book opened on one screen and and forums open on another? In no, order to no. The... no, no, okay. no, 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 def definitely not. No, 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 not at all. No, it's just, okay. it's just that the rubric. You can't choose another rubric, right? The only okay. way you can grade to a rubric is to pick a grade book item that has a rubric on it, right? So let's just say you you wanted to grade to a rubric, right? And there were no grade book items yet, right? What you'd have to do is create a grade book item with that rubric attached to it. And then in forums, you'd pick the grade book item in forums. And then you'd get, you know, you'd get the same rubric then between forums and grade book. That makes sense. I don't know. Does that seem like a bad fix to folks i think that makes total sense that makes sense to me too because that's it's still kind of the same workflow that we have now you have to create the item in the gradebook first and then you can grade and you can then attach it to to the forum so i think attaching you know if you're going to use a rubric then attaching the rubric when you create the gradebook item makes sense as far as the workflow goes <coughs> Yeah, well, I mean, it, it, it made sense to me because I, I suppose I'm coming at it with fresh eyes. I mean, I, I, as soon as I looked at that UI where you, you pick a grade book item and that, that, unlocks, that unlocks the rubric drop down, then you can pick a separate rubric. I, f I found that really confusing as soon as I looked at it, but I've not been using it, you know, like out in the wild. I mean, I don't, I don't you know, I don't teach with it, so you know, I, I thought I'd better ask, you know. <laughs> yeah. oh, thank you. That's good because we're having a lot of conversation in the chat around this workflow 
And of course, some folks want the, the rubric selection to be initiated through forum instead of gradebook. And I think I, you know, my gut feeling is this is an okay fix for now because you have to create a gradebook item first anyway if you're going to grade <laughs> right? Is that yeah, not I mean, right? Yeah, I mean, the only as far as I as far as I what I've gathered is the only way a student can look at that grade is through the gradebook. So the gradebook is kind of crucial to the you know, to the, to the functioning of grading within forums. The, the, two, the two things are inextricably linked. So I thought this made sense, what, what, what I'd done. But I think down the line, down the line, I think the, the kind of the grading process in forums does need to be rethought. You know, you, you need to be able to expose the rubrics in forums for the student to see in forums and so on and so forth. Right? The student shouldn't really have to go back to the gray book and, and and to look at it in there you know they, they should be able to look at it in multiple places probably but these are these are further mm -hmm. discussions on further jira tickets i'd say yeah i mean that's, that's 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 my take on it so here's here's what's happening in the chat right now is the conversation is around will the grading service the new grading service provide a better way of doing this i certainly hope so um do we want to use this approach for now until a grading new grading service is in place and hopefully that will completely transform the way forums is graded in the first place um i don't know what do y'all think that would be my opinion <clears throat> Because I think what, what Adrian is suggesting now it really does go along with what the current workflow is, which is create the item in the gradebook first, and now you're just attaching the rubric, but then just making sure that you can actually grade the rubric and it's visible to students <coughs> once that's been completed. And because they, they're they already going to gradebook to see any grades and comments for, for form grading anyway. Right. And then in the future, yes, we need to address the whole forums and grading thing. But as I said in the comment, that's that's a whole other can of worms and a much bigger can of worms, I think. Yeah, yeah. I think the new grading service is, is hopefully going to address this and other issues around grading. But I, I think for now, that's just my opinion, and I, I know others are saying this is a terrible approach <laughs> because <laughs> let's just fix it. And and again, Laura, Sarah, I think you're right. Forms may be one of those tools that could just use a fresh start, especially with grading. Um, and maybe the new grading service is a way to get at that. I don't know, but. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah, I mean. Go ahead. Sorry, no, I've interrupted. You know, carry on. Sorry. I thought I thought you'd finished. That's okay. And we do need to wrap this up, but I think we're coming to consensus that, that we're all willing to accept and um, and appreciate the the fix that, that you've designed, Adrian, for now. But we under also understand that the way forums work with grading needs to be fixed. Ultimately, um, it just is not a great way for oh, it's not a great workflow at all um so but that's a separate bigger conversation so am i correct that we have consensus to approve this approach folks? starting so with a grade book item attach the rubric I'm writing notes in the JIRA. Thank you. Um, starting with the gradebook item, attach the rubric, then go, this is the short version of the workflow, right? Then go back to forums and create the discussion. Is that right? 
Yeah, yeah and attach oh. yeah, attach to that grey book item in your forum or your right. topic or whatever. Yeah. And then when you grade, you'll get the rubric that you can use for that. Yeah, and the student will see will see your rubric um, selections. Right. Okay, because part of our process is to write notes in the JIRA that we discuss and then put the label on uh, TNL review. Right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that reminder. Oh, it's my superpower. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a really super one. <laughs> okay, folks, we, we really need to move on. And I did have another JIRA, but I want to make sure that Josh has time to walk us through the main course of our um, call today, which is to talk about the um, cloud integration services. So, so if we have time, I'll come back to the other JIRA that's on our list. And if not, we'll pick it up next time, which happens to be a JIRA Palooza anyway. And Laura is going to update the JIRA. Thank you so much, Laura. Doing it right now. All right, thanks a lot. So let us go ahead and move on. And Josh has just pasted a link into the chat called Blue Sky Cloud Ideas. So this is a place where we can capture our Blue Sky Cloud Ideas. And I can share that also. Well, I'm going to stay on for that. I'm staying on for that. Yep. All right. Yes, you should. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Josh, take it away. I'm going to mute myself. All right, will do. Thanks. Um, so this is a, a super preliminary conversation, um, but I thought it'd be good to bring it up with this group now as we're thinking about the roadmap. Uh, a lot of questions have come up in the roadmap conversations about what do we mean by uh, improvements to cloud integration or cloud storage integration. <clears throat> and one of the things that we have meant is expansion to other platforms, Box, Enterprise, Dropbox, et cetera. But um, Alan Regan wrote me with some uh, some further interesting ideas. His, his frame was that he was trying to figure out how to make uh, cloud storage integration, integration with cloud services more broadly, a differentiator for Sakai. So he was trying to think about the, the smartest kinds of integrations, uh, next level kinds of integrations. So what I wanted to do is to bring his list to this group. And it's a little early for California people to be joining this meeting um, when they have commutes and things. But I wanted to want to bring this list and get some initial feedback. Uh, you know, this is not, this is aimed at uh, Sakai 21, the earliest, right? <clears throat> but I think now's the time to start thinking about this as we start laying plans for the next three years. So that's the that's the framework for all of this. And, uh, you know, I do want to give a tip of the hat to Alan for coming up with these ideas. These are not my ideas, um, but I, I thought they were pretty neat. So, so he groups these ideas in three different categories, and I tried to do that in this document. So one is integration with institutional systems. So he suggests uh, in, in, integration with the institutional calendar service. Uh, with institutional email, with institutional storage more broadly. So he's thinking both about institutional cloud storage and potentially institutional on-prem storage. And he also mentions the institutional repository, which I read as the library service that presents uh, academic work by students and faculty, as well as collections and other kinds of things. <clears throat> so. So there are those th those kinds of integrations that he suggests that may be being differentiated. What I'm calling handling of collaborative documents. So he's he's envisioning a smart handling in which uh, not only can users link to pre-existing documents and folders from any tool in the LMS, but also uh, you know have workflows in the LMS to make it easier to provide those tools. So, um, so he's thinking, all right, so if you, if you link or attach a copy of a document to an assignment, you know, maybe you can, you can embed the, the view of a Google Drive folder in lessons. 
You can add links in forums or in resources. You can attach a document to a file upload and test some quizzes. Okay, so this is this is the, the starting point where you say, all right, here are all the places where this might be useful. And um, the integration through the file picker gets us part of the way there, I think, but possibly not all the way. Uh, but then he goes a step further and he says, all right, so now what I want to do is to programmatically apply the appropriate permissions so that it's viewable by the people with whom I'm sharing it in the LMS. Um, I want to be able to make copies of an existing document if that seems like the right thing to do and change the permissions on the fly. So he, he offers the idea of uh, instructor edit and student view for, uh, for an assignment attachment. Um, he suggests maybe initiating a document conversion to a different file format based upon the file type uh, for different situations, such as submitting an assignment to turn it in. Um, and he's also he also suggests maybe detecting whether trying to detect whether a file upload would violate a quota, and uh, ask how to address this problem. So these are all you know. I found these to be really interesting ideas, and it goes way beyond what we're thinking about for cloud storage now, which is largely table stakes. Uh, you know, the ability to insert a file or a file link from Google Drive or OneDrive. This is a, you know that was an unnecessary first step. Um, but these are all, you know, kind of really interesting ideas. And he also suggests, uh, you know, next level integration with other with the other ed tech tools. So he suggests integration with specialty APIs like Google Classroom within a tool. Um, he's using the uh, enable Turnitin uh, model to apply to other kinds of tools. So I mean, some of this is is potentially addressed by a broader implementation of Sugi. Uh, so, I mean, I think a, a lot of these are, you know, ideas that are, um, uh, you know, they're, some of them are available in spots. Um, you know, it's, it's like that line where people say, uh, you know, the future is already here, it's just not evenly distributed. You know, so I think he's suggesting more even distribution of some things we have and some introduction of some things we don't. So anyway, those were the ideas that he shared with me and I wanted to bring them to you guys and I wanted to ask a couple of questions. Um, I wanted to ask you guys about uh, whether, you know, which of these ideas you think are significantly on track? Um, what, are, what, are, what are your views about the ideas that are here? Uh, what ideas in this kind of a space, uh, in thinking about cloud service integration, what ideas are missing from this? And you know what are your what are your general reactions? So let's let's start with things that are on track. So as you as you look at this set of ideas, which ones resonate with you? So starting with the integration with institutional systems. So what are, what are your thoughts? Which of these seem uh, you know promising and useful? One of the things that we're talking about right now is the storage idea and how um, like replicating courses uh, automatically almost, you know, doubles the storage requirements and, um, and, and that's adding up to a whole lot of storage that may be duplicated items. How would, how would this uh, or would it address that issue or does it am ameliorate the problem so that storage doesn't become such an issue it's a good question, um, really good question. i mean it, it seems to me that there it, this addresses it some by the ability to um you know, to either include a link or the, or the file itself, um, you know, and, and some, I think his point about uh, asking what to do with a quota violation relates to this a little, but I think you're, this is a good question that isn't entirely answered in the ideas that we have here. What, what do others think? Well, I think, um, Personally, I think the storage service is, I, I believe initially where this, um, this service, the, these integrations sort of started. Is that, does that sound right? 
Yeah, I, 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 those were the use cases that I heard. I mean, and that's certainly the place that we started in 20. Right. So that's, that's a given in my mind. Um, now, email and calendaring services, that's really interesting. Um, it, yeah, you know, I could see some real potential for, for those. So tell me more. So if well, starting with uh, starting with calendar, because I know that's that's been brought up um, in different contexts. I know that I've talked to uh, Laura Geckler and Pat Miller about calendar. So what kinds of smart, useful calendar integrations between the the institutional cloud calendar service and uh, Sakai's calendar capabilities would actually help in a pedagogical setting? You mean like integrating with Google Calendar or with um, Outlook or depending on what calendar services the campuses are using? Yeah, so if if, uh, if the calendar in Sakai could write in a two-way kind of way to, uh, you know, to appropriate calendars in, you know, in your campus Google space, for example, um, you know, what, what affordances would that offer? Um, I mean, I wonder, Laura Geckler, if I could put you on the spot for a minute, because I know that we've talked about this. Um, could you share your vision at Notre Dame about um, how we could better leverage Sakai and course calendars in Google? Sure. Um... From the student point of view, it would be really great if they could see all of their courses, all of their assignments, all of their dates from all the courses they have to take on a single calendar. Um, the Sakai calendar isn't set up that way, obviously, and it looks a little long in the tooth, especially since a lot of us now have a calendaring service from a third party. We should be able to um, put that, embed that third-party tool into Sakai. Um, and yeah, Dave, that would integrate with stuff that students are planning to do that aren't course-related. So at Notre Dame, we use uh, we use the Google Calendar. Um, we have a calendar invites that we create for faculty from each of the courses they teach so that we can put on the well they have to choose to click on it if they chose to click on it is my understanding they would um they would re put the um course meeting dates on their calendar but for students we're talking something more um yeah due dates of tools from tools um and Laura, the, the, the assumption is that the calendar in Sakai is not a sufficiently good place to capture all this stuff, because these are all things that are coming from Sakai, but the problem, I think, if, if the problem is that the calendar in Sakai is inadequate and Google Calendar is more adequate, you know, then that's where the the sort of loop of Google Calendar back into Sakai, into Sakai seems to make sense. Am I getting this right? Well, yeah, and also as, um... As Dave E. pointed out, I don't, most students wouldn't want a calendar for their academic work and then another calendar for their social work, their not work, but their social plan, right? They want to be able to include their, the rest of their activities on this calendar. So um, Sean notes that you can subscribe to external calendars to get those calendars into Sakai. And you can export Sakai calendars to subscribe to those events from an external calendar. So there is, there's some two-way talking already, but it sounds as if it's not, it's not seamless enough, right? We're, we're, we're getting into the weeds a little bit, but I think it, you know, right. it's useful there's, to understand what we're after. Yeah, there's some latency there when you do the subscription. Um, That's right. And the instructor also has to put, um, they have to put dates on the calendar, right? Um, like the dates belong to the instructor and not, and not the student. And yeah, yeah. So, 
So there's an Outlook calendar as well. Terry Go lightly mentions that other third party calendars, not just Google. So it sounds uh, like part of the issue is having uh, broader support for a, a, a well, support for a broader set of calendars, right? Um, and part of it is addressing the latency that exists in, in the reciprocal subscriptions. Is there more? Uh, the fact that right now it's up to the instructor. Those dates belong to the instructor and not to the student. The instructor has to do something in order to push dates to a calendar. Well, why is that? You know, in all of this calendaring um, discussion reminds me that I think what I hear students say they really want is a notification service that's going to remind them. So not necessarily a calendar, but it would be great if the notifications would say, add this to my calendar um, so that they could control that. I, you know, it, it, this feels a little heavy handed to assume that students are going to want the LMS to populate their calendars. Well, they should have a choice, yeah. But a notification service doesn't, you know, force it on them, but it could give them a choice of adding it to possibly give them. Yeah, or you could start with a calendar and then the students could set up their own notifications if they want them. I don't know how they would do that. Oh, just from the calendar itself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that, that, that seems labor intensive on the student side and, and therefore less appealing. I don't know. I, I think students would find that less appealing. But. So do you think the notifications from the calendar should be the default? You know, you get the, you get the notifications and you have to go turn them off if they annoy you. I guess I'm, I'm not thinking about the calendar. I'm thinking of the notification service as something separate that comes from tools, like if there's an assignment coming due. Uh, and students can probably turn this on or off if they choose to get a notification. And then in that notification, if it could say, add this to my calendar, you know, that's what I'm thinking. I am not thinking of having notifications necessarily driven by the calendar. Mm. So, sorry, it's a little bit of an aside to this conversation, but that's my, that's my preconceived notion of, of what students at UVA have asked for. Yeah, Sean Foster says in the chat that in our recent local Sakai review, students' top request is to know when things are due. <clears throat> And sorry, uh, this is still a little bit of an aside about these notifications, but I, you know, in my mind, I could envision notifications as a Kai notifications app or something that they have on their phones because that's what they use every day, all the time, you know, to get notifications about stuff coming out of their courses in Sakai. That would be killer for them. Um, We've been talking internally at Longsite about, a, you know, just that kind of thing, a student notifications app. Yeah. yeah. It would be killer, I'm telling you. Okay. In, in, in my mind, I, I think kind of adding things to, to a calendar and notifications are a little bit different in that um, I'm, as a student, I could envision, okay, my instructor has set up this course and there's due dates throughout the semester. I want them all on my calendar now, you know, all the way through till the end of the semester, all, the, all those due dates. So I can kind of plan out ahead, whereas notifications might just come 48 or 24 hours before something is due. And that doesn't help with the, the long-term planning. It, it's well, great as a about, reminder. Uh, yeah. That's an assumption that that's <coughs> the choices you have. 
which may not be the case. I don't know, but I, you know, I don't know. That's a that's a good point. It's a fair point. Um, I mean, that, that's that's yeah. something that that's something that Google Calendar gives you, though, isn't it? It gives you notifications of things that are coming. You can set it up to to alert you, like uh, you know, a, 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 you know, a half an hour before and things like that, right? So that's something right. you do get for free with a Google Calendar. But I think I think what what I'm hearing here is like even if we could just drop a Google Calendar into a site, that's not the panacea, right? There's other there's other issues around notifications, just and just awareness of what's coming up. You know what I mean? Right, right. Yeah. You know, a lot of uh, what we hear from students is that they want, they kind of want just in time notifications, but it would be great if the notifications could be configured to be whatever they want, you know, a week ahead, a month ahead, or whatever. But sometimes things change really close to some given date for something, and they would probably want to know that for sure. How about this? I've, I've got a bit of an idea. Um, so, I mean, things get put into the calendar now, right, by, by assignments and so on and so forth, right? And there may be gaps in that kind of function where tools should be perhaps, you know, uh, you know more, more aware of the calendar and making sure they put the dates in there and adjust the dates as necessary, yeah? I mean, what if we just had something that was just like, you know, the current timeline, like in, like in Google's calendar, right? What's, what's happening today? what's happening tomorrow right and it's something you can so the synoptic calendar at the minute right so if you go into your workspace and you have the calendar tool there that should show you all of the events across all the sites that you're in right that's that's the idea of it yeah but the trouble is it's over there it's it's in your your home page or your workspace i mean having today's view or or like the next three days view Available mm -hmm. wherever you are in Sakai might be might might take us some part of the way there to you know to, to making students more constantly aware of, of, of kind of where they are date wise. I have to say that this would be a great opportunity for a student focus group or two if we could convene them. You know, because we're trying to we're trying to provide the voice of the students, but it's filtered through us, you know. So right. Trying to get a yeah. sense of what students need more directly would, would be a huge help. I've got a well, yes plus you know, plus there. I think if we could have a clear definition of what the questions are, we could get, you know, um, feedback that could be meaningful. I mean, my, my gut sense is that the, the low hanging fruit from student feedback at this particular moment, given what we're hearing, about about notifications would be to ask them, uh, you know, in a in a focus group or interview setting, what their needs would be regarding just in time or nearly in time notifications. You know, we 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 might also go a step further and say, okay, <clears throat> you know, leaving aside the notion of of calendars, maybe, but things happen things happen over time. You know, so there's there's planning that happens in term and what are needs for help uh, staying on task regarding those those planning scenarios sadly i didn't capture any of that but <laughs> some of what you said didn't come through at all terry noted on the chat um so we missed some of what you said but i i think we got the general idea um so look we're we're still up here on integration with institutional systems and i think we've had a great conversation um is there anything else you want to touch on josh from this um from these suggestions from alan be, before we have to adjourn no i don't i don't think so i mean i think you know, we're, it's so early before 21 that now is the time to be having these wide open conversations. And I think it would be kind of neat to come back at some point to Alan's question about really smart, programmatically smart handling of documents, uh, you know, because we know that we know that collaboration and, and teamwork and, uh, you know, and active learning is, is really important. So that might be worth a future conversation.
You know, and I, I could right. see us having a few of these kind of broad conversations to get some ideas out, uh, you know, as we, you know, that we could then maybe uh, condense down into actionable things as we get into February and March around the time of the release of 20 and we start thinking about planning for development for 21. Yeah. Uh, anybody else go and look at the link that Dave and Evelyn pasted in um, the chat for examples of what Blackboard is doing? Because I I think those are really, I mean, they are calendars, but they're also notification, you know, they and it looks like an app. So I think this is something along the lines of what students would really like to have. What do they need to do this week or tomorrow or coming up in this course? If you haven't gone to look at that, let me um, go ahead and share. Um, mm -hmm. So that's one of them. Really cool. I especially like the day when nothing is due. <laughs> So where, where's that from? Sorry, where, where have you got those screenshots from? Those are, are in Dave Evelyn's chat. Um, yeah. uh, they're from Blackboard, I believe, right, Dave? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, Josh, like Josh kind of said before, we we have had some kind of like brief discussions about about a mobile app that just does something like this, just the dates. You know what I mean? Nice and simple. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But something like this is really would be really cool because it shows the course, you know, exactly what to do and when. So I love that. We can put links in there as well. We could have links through to yeah. the actual thing. Yeah. Know, that, that'd be easy. Yeah. I'm not gonna. I almost said that'd be easy enough. I'm, I don't know that, but yeah, I mean, it's, <laughs> yeah, 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 sure. Yeah. But it's, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, we're trying to make Sakai nice and responsive, so he can just use the whole, you know, the whole site on the mobile, right? So we don't want to, we don't want to start talking about mobile apps to do the whole thing. But this is this is nice and elegant, you know. It really is. It really is. It looks great. So I have a question about these dates that you want to notify students about are you also wanting to notify students about late submission dates which are typically not displayed in the ui until the student can get there and see a late marker of some sort and in fact they don't display the dates at all in the ui unless it's tests and quizzes when you go into the quiz and it says you have until this late submission date to submit or the amount of time that's left on the quiz um, I have some concern about exposing these dates and notifying about these uh, extended late dates to students because they're often used specifically, um, you know, to allow a little bit of leeway after after the um, the item is is supposed to be submitted. Mm -hmm. A date has a pretty good suggestion, I think. Just mark it on the app that way. Yeah, I mean, we have added the um, the marking, like tests and quizzes says late, you know, it has a, a late marker. It In the older version, it was just red, and I think it's 19, it's been fixed to actually have text late. Um, but it still doesn't expose the date on the directly on the page. Yeah, instructor will ignore submission. You know, that's a conversation when this advances. I mean, that's definitely a, a good point, Tiffany. Thank you for sharing sharing that. And you know, I think those are things to consider as we move move this forward. This has been really interesting, and I love it. And I love the this app <laughs> that you shared, Dave. I think this really gives us something to visualize and, and, and strive for. Bye, Dave. Thank you. So we have about four minutes left. Um, and we can have one or two more comments, and then we're going to wrap up. Anything else you want to say or add?
Josh. Can you hear me, Josh? Oh, was that, was that a, no, I just want to say thanks for, for, for some uh, big, broad thinking. It's sometimes hard to do. And I think this is the kind of stuff we, we need to do sometimes to get ourselves ready for what comes next. So um, more to come, I hope. Yes. The next time, uh, which is December 4th, we're going to have a JIRA Palooza. So um, we'll get back to the JIRA that we didn't cover today that Sean Foster sent me. Um, sorry, Sean, that we didn't have time to cover that. And um, we have an <coughs> opening on December 18th. So if any of you have things you're working on that you want to share um, or, or any other conversations, um, we'll let let me know or uh, Matt Burgess, and we will get it on schedule. And I hope that everybody has a wonderful Thanksgiving holiday here in America. And we'll see you next time on December 4.